So in this video, we're gonna learn about Amazon EC2s, how to set up an EC2, and how to do some really simple, cool stuff with them at the end of the video. As a prerequisite to this video, I expect that you have an Amazon account and at least know how to log in to your Amazon account. So before we dive in and start creating EC2s, let's go ahead and summarize exactly what an EC2 is. EC2 stands for Elastic Compute Cloud, and what it is is basically a virtual machine that runs someplace else. That someplace else just so happens to be Amazon's cloud, but an EC2 instance is basically a computer located somewhere else. It seems like a lot of people get Amazon EC2s and S3s confused and conflated, and an S3 is something completely different. We can cover that in another video. For this video, we're only going to be talking about EC2s. Now when you first log into AWS, you should see a dashboard like this one. AWS dashboards are pretty busy with a lot of information, but the first thing you want to look at is your region. Make sure that you're working out of a region that is geographically close to where you are located. Now the dashboard has a lot of information and wizards and things like that, but we're going to be talking about EC2s here. Now if you look at all the services that AWS provides, it's really easy to get overwhelmed. There is a lot here but we're going to be focusing on the section called Compute. Specifically, we're going to be looking at EC2, not the EC2 container service. That, again, is something different. When you drill into the EC2 section, you'll see yet another busy dashboard with a lot of information. If you're new to AWS and EC2s, which, if you're following this video, you probably are, it's really easy to get overwhelmed here, too. There's lots of obscure terms like, what's a security group? What's a VPC? What's an AMI? When you're just learning or exploring AWS, you really don't have to worry about most of this stuff, actually. The entire pane on the left-hand side, for example, you can just collapse most of this stuff here. So let's go ahead and launch our instance by clicking on the Launch Instance button. The first page you should see is this little quick start section, which shows a list of popular images to choose from. You can see that Amazon actually has their own distribution of Linux, but it's based on an older version of CentOS, and I don't recommend that you use that one. For this video, I'm going to use the Ubuntu Server 16.4 image because Ubuntu is by far the most popular distribution in the cloud, but it won't matter which image you choose here, assuming you know your way around the distribution on that image. The next page is where you'll choose your instance type, which is basically the machine configuration that your image will run on. Assuming that you have access to it, just stick with whatever instance the free tier eligible tag is on. If the free tier isn't available, just stick with a nano or micro. From here, click the blue button that says Review and Launch. This should jump you to the last page, which is step seven, and at the top it should say, improve your instance's security. Your security group is open to the world. So I want to avoid diving too deep in this video, and you don't really need to know what a security group is, but we do need to make one change to it. So let's go ahead and do that. After you click the edit security groups link, you'll get taken back to step six, where we'll configure a security group. In this context, the security group is the thing that handles which protocols and ports can come in and out of your EC2 instance. A really simple analog would be a firewall, though that is not what it is. You can think of it kind of like a firewall. So a moment ago, what that arrow was referring to was the fact that port 22 is open to everyone. So we want to narrow the scope and make port 22 only open to us. So we'll simply change the source to my IP, and that makes it so only you and your IP with your identity can access your EC2 instance. Now before saving this change, I like to give the security group a more reasonable name. Names in AWS have a tendency of becoming very ambiguous, so we'll go ahead and name this demo-sg, sg for security group. That way if you see it in a big long list, you'll know that the dash sg stands for security group. So after you click review and launch, you'll go back to step seven and notice that error is gone. And everything from here is good, so go ahead and click the big blue launch button. The next thing you'll see is this dialog talking about key pairs. Password authentication is disabled by default on EC2 and should remain disabled. Don't log in and enable password authentication. You should always use tokens or keys. This little dialog here allows you to create a key pair. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to create a new key pair, call it EG key, and I'm going to save it to my SSH folder. Once you've created and downloaded your key pair, you can go ahead and launch your instance. This final page just provides you with a launch status, but let's watch the EC2 from the EC2 list. We'll click the name of the EC2, and that'll take us to the instance list. You can see this list is asynchronous, so everything in the list will update in real time. The instance date is pending, the status check is initializing, and it doesn't have a public IP address. Once our instance is assigned a public IP address, we can take that address and log into it. 
Now I'm aware that you can log into your instance from the browser, but I don't recommend that you do that. Instead, just open a local terminal and use the key that you got when you created your instance to SSH into it. As soon as your instance shows it has a public IP address, you can log into it. So now our instance has an IP address and the instance state shows running, so let's go ahead and SSH into it. I'll go ahead and copy the public IP address to my clipboard and then I'll open a terminal and CD to my SSH folder. So if you're not familiar with using an identity or a key for SSH, it's actually really easy. You just do SSH-I and then your key. And since we use the Ubuntu image for our EC2, the user is Ubuntu at the public IP address. The first time you SSH in, you have to accept the connection and we're in. We are now logged into our very own slice of the Amazon cloud. You can see that this EC2 instance is pretty much like any Ubuntu server install. You've got the same environment variables. We'll go ahead and download HTOP the exact same way you would on a desktop or other server. It's virtually no different than running an Ubuntu server locally. The only difference is you're running it in somebody else's environment, that other environment being Amazon's cloud. So at this point, what you want to do on your instance is really up to you. The sky is the limit, or at least the machine configuration is the limit. And this is probably a good place to wrap up the video. So I hope this helped you learn a little bit about AWS and EC2 instances in the cloud. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share the video with your friends. Let me know what else you'd like to see in the comments. AWS is a really, really big ecosystem with a lot of different things and moving parts, so if there's something that you want to see, you should let me know about it. Thanks a lot for your support, and thanks for watching.